Okay, folks. Do you have any doubts from the last class? Yeah? Is everything that we did in the last class crystal clear to all of you? Okay. Then today we will not have much of work to do. I'll talk to you about a little bit more about yeah. In the last class, we said that if there is, okay, let me take a summary of what we did in the last class. If there is endogeneity, we discussed first between structural form equations and reduced form equations. In a structural form equation, you can also have an endogenous variable on the right hand side. So if you need to convert that into a reduced form, in the reduced form, all the Endogenous variables are written purely as functions of exogenous variables. The moment we did that with both the supply demand, the, 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 the equations, for example, and the c is equal to a plus by and y is equal to c plus i equations, we saw that we could not estimate any of these individual equations consistently by OLS because there was a correlation between the error term and the explanatory variable. All right? which we call the simultaneity bias, which is a problem which we call the simultaneity bias because the estimates were not unbiased. Okay, right? So we said, how does one deal with that? Instruments, we, we thought of a strategy called instrumental variables. What is an instrumental variable? An instrumental variable is a variable where, so suppose you have y is equal to a plus b x plus e. And suppose x is endogenous. Then you think of another variable z, which is correlated with x, but not correlated with the error term. And you use that estimator, that, that variable, instead of x, to be able to find, to, to be able to, uh, you know, to, to estimate beta, right? Which is called an instrumental variable estimator. Then we saw one particular example of an instrumental variable estimator, which is a two-stage least squares. So we said if y is equal to a plus bx plus e, and if z is an instrument for x, then in the first stage, you regress x on z, get the fitted values from this, which are called x hat, and use x hat to be regressed in, uh, you know, use and regress y on x hat. And that's how you get the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the instrumental variables estimator. Okay? But you have to be careful in using the, finding the t values. Because the t values will now have to be, uh, you know, they'll not be, for example, in the model y is equal to a plus b x plus e, I will use x hat instead of x. The standard error of, uh, of, of beta will not be given by square root of sigma square upon summation x i square, but obviously will involve x hat and so on and so forth. So those adjustments you have to make. Right? That is the kind of, that is what we studied in the last class. To reinforce things a bit, so today really, this lecture will more or less be a doubt solving session over what we have done uh, over the semester, because this is the, this is your last lecture before the mid-semester exams. Right? So what you will have in the mid-semester is module 1 and module 3. Because you have covered module 1 and module 3 completely. I propose to do with, go with module 2 after the mid-semester. So module 2 and module 4, we will do after the mid-semester exams. Okay? To reinforce the ideas, we said that if you have or to keep our simple analogy, a model without an intercept, ext, and suppose xt is an x is an endogenous variable. What do you mean by an endogenous variable? Can somebody tell me the difference between an endogenous variable and an exogenous variable? Exogenous variables are ones which are determined from outside the system. The endogenous variables are ones whose values are determined from within the system. So let x be an endogenous variable. And let zt have the property
that z t has the property that covariance x and z is not 0, but covariance yeah sure right now if instead of x I use z okay then what you must understand is so I will have covariance of y t z t okay right what will be covariance of y t z t so suppose I can write okay which will be yeah covariance of z with y is b covariance of z with x and covariance of z with e okay sure by hypothesis this is 0 because covariance of z and e is 0 right okay so what is b for you b for is obviously covariance y t z t upon yeah sure but what is covariance y t z t if I have to write it this in formally it would be now assume that I have a model without an intercept right or or I can write this model as 1 upon n okay 1 upon n summation okay yeah this will be the covariances right so this can go this can go so this is what you will notice that in a so suppose if z was a vector right how would you get z dash y so this will be nothing but yeah this will be z dash y upon x dash z do you see this because this is summation y t z t right see if z is z1 z2 z3 z4 y is y1 y2 y3 y4 this is z1 y1 plus z2 y2 plus z3 y3 so this is z dash y upon x dash z because I need x t z t here okay right this is the instrumental variable estimator okay this is the instrumental variable estimator right this is the instrumental variable estimator in general now two stage least squares is one type of an instrumental variable estimator okay two stage least squares is one type of an instrumental variable estimator because what is a two stage least square is this okay can I wipe this off this is clear everybody everything everyone understands how an instrumental variable is constructed how the formula for beta iv has come right beta hat iv okay this should be beta hat iv whereas what will be beta hat ols here beta hat ols or this can be written as this is the same thing as so beta hat ols is x dash x inverse x dash y whereas beta hat instrumental variable is x dash z inverse z dash y this is the point because this is in the denominator so x dash z inverse right this is the difference between the instrumental variable and an OLS estimator this is unbiased this is inconsistent it can this can be shown to be consistent that is as the sample size increases 
beta hat i v will get closer and closer to true value of beta whereas beta hat o l s will not necessarily get closer and closer to true value of beta because of the simultaneity bias. Yeah, we know there is simultaneity bias then the o l s estimators are neither unbiased nor consistent, but it can be shown that will you know if you do the third semester statistical foundations will get to know how to prove that beta hat i v is a consistent estimator right ok. What does two stage least squares do? Two stage least squares is one form of this. I just show you how. We learned that in a two stage least square model, in a two stage least square model, I have yeah, there is endogeneity, x is an endogenous variable and therefore we need an instrument. Suppose z is an instrument. So, first we do the following regression. Yeah? Gamma z t plus v t. Okay? We do an estimate of gamma z t plus v t. Then from this equation we get x at t. which is gamma hat z t right x hat t which is gamma hat z t we estimate this regression and then we do y t is equal to beta where this beta is the instrumental variables estimate beta i v right I will show you how why this instrument that beta hat you will get here will be the same as the instrumental will why why that will be an instrumental variable estimator. This is called a two stage least square estimator right you can as well write here T S L S. I am going to argue to you why this will also be a beta hat beta T S L S will also be a beta I V right sure ok. Now, now think of what beta hat is here ok. So, think of beta hat two stage least squares ok beta hat two stage least squares. What is that how do you obtain this you obtain this by summation y t yeah that will be the value for beta hat T S L is that will be the formula right, but what is x hat t? x hat t is gamma hat z t right and what is so, so basically uh, what is gamma hat z t gamma hat z t because gamma hat is nothing but summation x t z t upon summation z t square into z t is x hat t because gamma hat t would be nothing but this quantity yeah we have got it we have got it from this regression. So, gamma t will be nothing but summation x t z t upon summation z t square into z t right that is x hat t sure. So, you will have to replace x hat t here you will have to replace x hat t here right. So, what will you get summation y t ok. upon summation z t square right. So, what is the denominator here, here, here what should it be? I have replaced in so I have replaced x at t by this quantity right. So, what should that denominator be? z t square into z t right sure so that is summation z t square ok right divided by summation 
z t square summation z t square okay yeah yeah what should it be this is x at t okay correct so summation y t you are very correct this has to be summation y t summation x t z t whole upon summation z t x x at t square right so and what is x at t so that has to be summation of right summation z t whole square right sure everybody is clear with this okay now if i were to simplify this what would this be what would be the next step so this can be written as can i can i wipe this off now okay so if you want to ultimately bring it in the form of covariance xz and covariance zy right so covariance zy upon covariance xz is the formula we want to get that right sure okay right so this is now you can see that covariance yt zt is the terms there you can see covariance xt zt somewhere right so the question is now to rearrange things in such a way that we get the beta iv as the same as the beta tsls you can see the relevant terms in numerator and denominator you can see that there is covariance yt zt in the numerator for example this can simply be written as this can be written as summation xt zt upon summation 